10 scariest players in NBA history. So we just came from watching the most heated moments for the 2024 season. And I felt like it was only right to now check out this video, the scariest players in NBA history, because some of the fights or scuffles that we saw in, in the last video, none of them were really players that, you know, you fear or give a shit about, bro. It's like players that are just annoying, like Dylan Brooks, Graham Williams, Draymond, like those are all players, you know, they're going to do some shit, but it's like, you're not really worried about them. Like, like you, you would fight them. You know what I mean? Now let's check out some players that you wouldn't want to fight. Let me see. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can think of any. Well, yeah, Ron Artest for sure. He'd probably be one. Um, James Johnson probably be number one because he could actually fight. You know, he'll, he'll definitely fuck you up. Um, Rodman probably be in here. Oh, who else? Maybe Shaq? Like, Shaq's not really known for, you know, fighting, but you don't, you definitely don't want him to be known for that. You know what I mean? It's ours. Not because so of their that, skill, let's just get into the it. number of points they were scoring, but because of their sheer physical strength and willingness to throw hands at any given Aslam? This is nah. a list of players Howard? that nobody nah. wanted to mess with. The scariest NBA players of all time. There were plenty of NBA players who could fight, but only one was a James Johnson. MMA player, I told you. James Johnson, a six foot yeah, seven, nobody, want. nobody wants to smoke with that motherfucker, bro. Who currently plays for the Pacers was a lead vote getter in a survey of who in the league would you least like to fight? <laughs> Yo, I told you, bro. Look, why does it do that? Why did it do that shit for the volume, bro? I'm trying to go back in the video. Who's that? Ibaka? He's like, oh shit, James Johnson. No, 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 no smoke with me. No. Nah, bro, I promise you, bro, you don't want that. Oh, okay, that changes everything, bro. I, I like, I didn't know who he actually fought, like, competed, bro. Yeah, definitely. What the fuck? Bro, imagine having a 20 and 0 record and playing in the fucking NBA at the same time. That's, that's fucking crazy. He even said that he could beat John Jones if no. he had enough time to train wrestling. No. Not gonna beat him, That's just delusion, like bro. I'm sorry. With a year of training defense, I just need ground defense. No. The whole league would say Come the down, same bro. thing. One player said of Johnson, that's not smoke they want. I'm seeing it in person. And it's easy to be a bully when you're one of the biggest and strongest guys in the court. But how about being one of the most terrifying... <laughs> what is that, bro? The what the fuck you got? Designer glasses on? What the fuck? being one of the most terrifying players in the NBA while weighing less than 200 pounds? Vernon Maxwell was listed at 6 foot 4 and... Oh, I've never heard of this guy before. I'm not gonna lie. Mad Max says That's a good nickname, though. Know. During his career, well, that's because of like movies, but everybody, guards, centers, opponents, teammates, and even spectators. What? And while he was in Houston, Max got into a heated argument with teammate teammates? Hakeem Olajuwon and nearly stabbed him to death. What the Max fuck? Argument with teammate Hakeem Olajuwon and nearly stabbed him to death. But Max that, ladies and gentlemen, is a psychopath. Get me away from that motherfucker, bro. Teammates and even spectators. And if you're fighting your own you teammates, into a that's a whole different level. Hakeem Olajuwon and nearly stabbed him to death. But Mad Max didn't stop there. Because in 2000, when he played for Seattle, Mad Max wanted to beat up another teammate, Gary Payton. Vernon wanted to fight Payton so bad that he ended up hurting two of his teammates who tried to be peacemakers. And this next guy also... Damn, that's the first time I heard of that dude in. Also happens to be the most Try to stab her, Hakeem? Of all time. During his prime, Shaq weighed between 330 and 370 pounds, and yet he could move like a ballet That's dancer. That's crazy. His combination of we need to do a video on Shaq, bro. And agility was unmatched, and nobody could stop the Shaq attack. Not only was Shaq dominant, he was also vicious towards his opponents. I mean, this guy was a, a force. He was mean. He was nasty. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This guy was a, a force. He was mean. Look at those Transformers fucking in the back, bro. I need, to, I need to know where he got those from. Those are sick. So vicious towards his opponents. I mean, this guy was a, a force. He was mean. He was nasty. The morning after you played with Shaq, it always felt like you were in a fight. You were sore from head to toe. Nazar Muhammad. I'm looking at him like the fear that you might get is he's doing that full speed thing. Am I really going to try and take a charge? Nah, hell no. I'm getting out the way. Look at that. <laughs> Only player ever to not shoot oh, Kenya Martin, bro. How do I forget about Kenya Martin? Kenya Martin should be in there too. When it comes to Shaq's dear frenemy on inside the nba it's safe to say he had a little temper as well charles barkley was an undersized big chuck too standing at only six foot six but he was athletic extremely physical and wasn't backing i don't remember chuck being like that barkley's lists of fights and on-court incidents is extremely long 
starting really? with his forearm knockdown. <laughs> Yo. He single-handedly fought the bad boy Pistons. Barkley's career was even in jeopardy at one point. I did not know that. not only fighting on the court, but also getting into brawls with civilians. Most of this is like behind my time, right? Like, I really didn't he got arrested after throwing a watch a glass basketball back then. Or in 1991, when Sir Charles infamously spat on a young girl sitting in the crowd. A little girl? To spit on someone else. When you come oh, he, he missed. All the fighting, cursing, and trash talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny though. That's kind of funny. Oh my God. An game suspension yep. for the most gruesome incident in the malice in the palace. That was just one of his many incidents on the court. From the moment he arrived in the league in 1990, all I remember from him is the malice in the palace and that fucking elbow he hit James Harden with, bro. That shit was disgusting. Nobody wanted to play against. In 2001, when Jordan was prepping for his second unretirement, our test broke his ribs in a pickup game. But Damn. beyond being a world class defender and a defensive player of the year, Ron instilled fear in opponents because he was a wild man. Our test yeah. drank alcohol before and even during games, and he'd always play on the edge of getting ejected. Is that allowed? In 2003, he nearly fought Pat Riley and the whole Miami Heat bench. And that hey, Pat Riley, Pat Riley, uh, I respect Pat, Pat so Riley, bro. He's not going to duck no smoke from nobody. Equipment. You'd think that he'd calm down after serving his suspension for the malice at the palace, but Artest just continued to punch people in the face. In 2007, Artest had to spend 20 days in jail for another off-court incident because he beat up his wife. But despite changing, come on now, bro. We don't we don't support that at all. His nope. old habits no domestic violence at all. Hard. A decade before our test started punching people on NBA courts, one particular bully was more terrifying than anybody. Charles Oakley came into the league in 1980. I've heard about him, but I've never reputation for being actually known he hard foul, Oakley was there. what he when did, you know? broke out between players. Oak was right in the middle of it. In 1989, he squared up against Xavier McDaniel. Another colorful character who could easily. And they were really swinging back then, too. It wasn't like now where, you know, you just push and shove. And it was really swinging. Barkley to the floor. Didn't matter that it was preseason, as both players immediately started swinging and got ejected. During the 1997 playoffs, Oak got into a fight. Do you guys think this should come back? And next year, these two hotheads got into it again. In I kind of feel like it should come back, bro. Like, guard Jeff McInnes. Makes it more. Over a mutual hmm, I don't know. Because from the business side of things, of course, you don't want that to come back. But like from a fan's perspective, it should come back. More entertaining. Who Oakley beat up over a gambling debt. Even after he retired from the league, Oak wasn't done fighting. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the video I saw. And that's why people who dared to step I saw that video of him and the. Uh, I think he was trying to. They were trying to get him no ejected or something. Or, He's the main reason one other you know, kicked out. Guy even made it to the How did I forget Ben Wallace too? Damn. Yeah, ben I forgot about Ben Wallace. Attended Charles Oakley's basketball camp. And Oakley, being Oakley, punched him in the face. He got a ball drive As a back. kid? Bam. Guy even made it to the NBA. When he was a high school kid, Ben Wallace attended Charles Oakley's basketball camp. And and Oakley being Oakley punched him in the face. As a kid, though, the best bam, hold me in the lip, you know, split my jump because he showed no fear and played with tenacious energy. Okay, that motherfucker was crazy, too, bro. Wallace's game, and he recommended him to his alma mater, Virginia Union University. Without Oakley, Big Ben might have never played in the NBA, but once he made the league, he showed immediately that he was made of the same material as his mentor. At six foot nine, Wallace was the shortest center in the league. They called him Big Ben. He looked big as hell, bro. See, ben was a fitness freak who yeah, never he was left strong the gym. As fuck. He bench 400 pounds. Damn. Due to his muscular body, mean face, and crazy afro, no Nobody was messing with him, and it didn't. Yeah, if I see that motherfucker in the street, bro, I'm not teammate, fucking with him. Wallace, a guy who couldn't control oh, Rashid too. And who yeah. played like a ticking time bomb. Sheed was a walking technical foul, and he's the all-time leader in techs in a season with 41. But that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's almost. That's one every other game. Time. Damn. That title belongs to Bill Lambeer and Rick Mahorn, who put the bad in the bad. I've heard of Bill Lambeer, but I don't really. You no, know, the same thing with um. Or shown to the floor by Detroit's big. Damn. Damn. Long have in the 80s who wasn't punched. Was that on Bird? Or shown to the floor by that's Detroit's dirty as fuck, bro. They long had a reputation for being the dirtiest players ever, especially. That's not something you want, though, right? Mahorn was setting hard screens and throwing punches. Whoa! 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 Whoa, where did I just see? Screens and throwing punches. A little grab grab. Play defense. I like to bump and bang, I guess. And that's what's basically has been my job. Lambeer was also notorious for planting his feet in the player's landing space, which resulted no, in plenty of no, ankle no. injuries. I didn't really ever yeah, that's... like Lambeer in any social situation. No. Yeah. 
And uh, it's because he's a dirty player. That is dirty as fuck, bro. It's like the OG Zaza Pachulia. Dennis Rodman was called the Worm, but his other nickname, Dennis the Menace, probably suits him even better. Playing with unlimited energy, Rodman would get in opponents' faces. He'd trip them, annoy them, and not let them breathe. What I'm seeing, the battle between these two guys, they're fighting, giving it everything they got. Dennis wasn't the Carmelone? player ever. Carmelo should be here too, no? one of the most irritating and physically difficult to play against. Nobody had an easy night against Rodman. And this next player was far from the biggest or the strongest, yet nobody wanted to mess with him, not even Shaq. Standing at 6'6 and 220 pounds, he may not look like a bruiser, but Jerry Stackhouse was a bad man and somebody you didn't want to get Jerry angry. Stackhouse. Stackhouse's fists have a long list of NBA faces no, on their resume. I don't resume. think I've heard of him before. In 1996, before. he landed a couple of big haymakers on Jeff Damn! on their resume. In 1996, he landed a couple of big haymakers. Bro, he's on swinging on that motherfucker. In 97, Stack punched Allen Iverson in the face in practice. It was one of his best friends on the Sixers. However, <laughs> if you think that Stack Another one? only went after little guys, so this guy was a psychopath too. In 99, Stackhouse beat the hell out of six foot ten Christian Leitner over a gambling debt. But the coup de grace of his fighting career happened in 2005, when he brutally beat down jazz rookie Kirk Snyder. After the game, which Snyder provoked Stackhouse, Jerry asked his equipment manager for a tracksuit so he wouldn't mess up his suit. He then walked to the jazz bus and put a smackdown on Snyder. We were was, was in the game. He came, gave me a cheap shot. You know, I just kind of lost it. I wasn't worried about the game anymore. So now I just waited for him in the tunnel. After which, arena security testified that Snyder received a severe beating. Treating it like any other day at the office, Stackhouse returned to the locker room, calmly handed over the tracksuit to the equipment manager, and put on his suit and tie like nothing happened. In the 2006 finals, after he fouled Shaq super hard, nobody from the Heat said a thing to Jerry. And even Shaq, even Shaq just walked away. Damn. And the last, but not least, scary person on this scary list. Scary dude for Shaq to not even fucking want to know that shit. For his four all star appearances. It's Latrell Sprewell, whose career low light is the never heard of this to be choking of PJ Carlissimo, his coach on the Golden State Warriors. He choked his Carlissimo coach? Carlissimo yelled at Sprewell to try a little harder in practice and wanted him to put a little mustard on his passes. Spree was in a bad mood that day, and something triggered him to attack his coach. Latrell threatened to kill his coach and started dragging him backward by the throat. Like like a rag doll. So Proceeded I'm guessing he got out Carly Simo for a suspended good 10 seconds before he got traded away by his teammates. After he spent 10 minutes in the locker room, it don't matter if you're going to apologize and came back like, to attack his coach again because of apparent marks. What? Carlissimo wasn't satisfied and came back to attack his coach again. <laughs> Bro, I thought he was going to say after 10 minutes of cooling down, he apologized. No, he went back for more. That's fucking crazy. He still wasn't satisfied and came back to attack his coach again. Because of apparent marks on Calissimo's neck, the NBA issued an investigation and suspended Spreewell for 68 games without pay. I would trade his ass too. Only beating of Spree's career. Oh, that's psychopath behavior, bro. Jerome Kersey and then returned to practice with a 2 by 4 threatening to kill Kersey. Then, to top it off, in 2002, wait, 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 what? With apparent marks on Calissimo's neck, the NBA issued an investigation and suspended Spreewell for 68 games without pay. But this wasn't the only beating of Spree's career. In 1995, he beat up teammate Jerome Kersey and then returned to practice with a two okay, bro, no. threatening to kill Kersey. This guy's then, a psychopath for real. Off, in 2002, he came to the Knicks practice camp with a broken hand, which he broke after an assault on his yacht. And before we finish this off, here's a couple of honorable mentions of the Barnes? scariest guys ever. KG, Karl Malone, Karl Malone. The leader in technical fouls and the unofficial all-time leader in elbows thrown. Then there's Kenyon Martin, who made a career yep. out of being Kmart. tougher and meaner than his opponents. Kevin Garnett made most rookies' lives a living hell. Ivan Johnson was called Ivan the Terrible and made people uncomfortable just by his presence. And the two hosts of the All Smoke podcast were no strangers to a fist fight. Javaris Crittenden, Anthony Mason, David West, Quinn AC and Udonis Haslam all deserve a mention as well. If you think we forgot somebody, please let us know in the comments and check out some of our other videos on the screen now. Okay, so some of these were um, expected, but some of these guys, bro, they were just straight up fucking psychopaths. Like that last week, we just saw that he uh, trying to kill his coach, choke him the fuck out, <laughs> came back for seconds. Like, I, I don't know. How do you, I feel like that should have been more than 68 game suspended without pay bro like that that's damn near you should get like banned you know or uh i mean your own coach and then what he did to his teammate i i, I don't know bro how do you feel about that like what do you guys think would be a 
acceptable punishment for something like that. Because I understand it right when like you're you're doing that shit against opponents, but like when you're doing shit like that to teammates, that's when you're that's when you kind of become a psychopath. Like doing that shit to the people you you play with every day, like yeah, that's that's crazy. But it's also like you know some of these players like it could be uh scary on court, you know. But then I I bet you, bro, it's like some players are scary off court. You know what I mean? The ones that will keep that B for that smoke going even when the game is done. Those try to do shit after the game and, you know, they'll hold it. Like, that's... I feel like that would be the the most scariest thing. But, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Um, If you guys have any you want me to react to, leave them down below in the comments. But I'll see you in the next one. Peace.